What's up? This is Serenity with Cascade Media Group, and I'm here with a poet, a host, comedian, Queen Sheba. She's out of Atlanta. She's here in Kansas City at the ULIT event tonight at Mattergall. Um, why don't you tell us, how'd you end up coming to Kansas City this time? Actually, I came to Kansas City this time because my son goes to Baylor University, and Baylor played University of Kansas last night at... Uh, and it was like the biggest game in the country because Baylor is number two and Kansas City is number three and you guys got the best home court advantage. Sorry, I got a little cold on battling, but it was a, it was a crazy game. Baylor almost pulled it off, but we didn't. It's cool. We're still number two or three in the country, so March Madness is going to be awesome. We'll get them again in uh, the Big 12 Conference. So, uh, I'm sorry. So, that's how I got here, but Botify G was like, oh, you're going to be in town. Let me... Uh, you were here about a year as well, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is somewhat, and then I know the year before that you came for some, so it's kind of somewhat your home away from home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, when I was in Virginia, uh, I used to come to Kansas City a lot, come up through the Midwest, so I would do Kansas City, St. Louis, Chicago, Milwaukee, and Bonafide G and I have been friends for at least 12 or 13 years now, so when I told him I was coming to town for the game, he was like, why don't you stay an extra night and come do this show? So he actually threw this for me, which I really appreciate. That's the power in your relationships and your wealth. And and it was, it's only a few people here, but I learned a long time ago, that doesn't mean nothing. You know what I mean? I got on 106 in Park when there was six people in the room. I got on the Apollo when it was like 12 people in the room. So a lot of great shows have come for me and relationships. And it doesn't have to be a huge crowd. I think people get it confused just because there's not 200 people in the room doesn't mean that it's not going to be a good show. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to do my best. And, and nobody should. Everybody should do their absolutely best if it's one or 1,000, you know? That's so. I know you've been doing poetry for a while. I follow somewhat of your career. Um, I know you uh, what, did, You got a Grammy for Spoken Word Artist. Um, two, of, two of my albums were listed under the Grammy Domino Effect and Shibatar. So I didn't win the Grammys. That would be nice, but uh, I have a new album coming out called Situationships, and it's a mixtape of my poems and some songs. So um, hopefully we'll get it in this year for the Grammys of 20, 2018. And uh, y'all, if you're a Grammy voting member, I can't tell you who to vote for uh, because that's against the rules. But if you happen to see my name, then vote for your favorite poet under the spoken word category. And I know um, you just received an MFA not that long ago, right? Um, so how was the experience going from a poet that didn't have like necessarily the educational formal background in it to now having the MFA and um, now you're teaching as well? Are you going to move toward teaching? or are you already doing that? Well, I learned doing my MFA that a lot of people, especially the creatives, we come up with our own classes. So right now, myself and Georgia Me are formulating and writing a curriculum for master's classes for poets in Atlanta. I know, I'm really excited about it, yeah. So we're going to start that pretty soon. They're going to be in three-month blocks. And um, anybody from around the world is welcome to join our master's classes. You just have to be willing to commit on the weekends. Um, so I will say that having a degree, having my master's degree has opened up my world. I was able to study abroad. I uh, got my degree from Queens University. I started off at Antioch in LA. And that was cool. There was some racial tension there that I just didn't feel like dealing with. And so I moved over to Queens University. And I know most people are like, well, it's a whole bunch of white people there too. Yeah, there may be, but sometimes the climate is just different, you know? And doors just open up when you know when you want to close, uh, close the door on a bad relationship and just be like that wasn't for me um, and plus I came from a division one undergrad school so I really wanted my master's program to be on a campus and Antioch was in a was in an office building and I was like nah I kind of deserve a little bit better than that they do have some great uh, professors and visitors and lecturers coming through so no shade on the on the program itself um, there was one professor there that was just kind of out of pocket we started a petition against him and it was really kind of interesting, but um, it helps me open up my eyes to be able to do you know, clubs like this and then to be able to be a keynote speaker. So I'm very versatile and can do anything at any time. Um, I am going to move towards teaching once I open up my bed and breakfast. I used to own one a while ago and some people... No, yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to do it, you know what I mean? So it's no point in being broke. There's so much money out here to get. And especially for me, if it stays under the umbrella of the arts, I feel like... I'm helping our community grow and flourish, you know, as well as providing income for me and my family. So what are some things that you're doing with your comedy next? Oh. 
<laughs> so um, I'm a, one of the best hosts in Atlanta, and people uh, hire me to come host their shows all over the country. So I'm for hire. You want to have me come to your show? I got a passport. I can go anywhere in the world. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, I come back to Kansas City and host your show for you. Um, I started doing stand-up officially in 2012, so I'm going on like five plus years, and it's been great. I've gotten great opportunities. I've gotten open for some great comedians and uh, host some amazing shows, including Rodney Perry. He's my um, mentor. Uh, Kiana Dancy, she's another mentor of mine. Uh, just some some great, great people. So it's been super exciting. I'm, I've been, built some great friends. I'm Mario Torrey. Um, also Vanessa Fraction, who was in Barbershop. Uh, people kind of confuse us a little bit, you know, with our hair, but all these people have been real gracious to me, so I appreciate them for helping me along with comedy. Because it was like starting a career all over again. Like, I had to start a bottom. Totally right. It's a different It's a different, it's a different genre. So I was starting at the bottom of the totem pole and, you know, still to kind of work myself up. So, okay. so what are some subjects you're going to cover tonight with your poetry? Um, we're going to do some politics, of course, because, you know, Trump being in office. Um, I haven't written anything specifically for Trump yet. It's still kind of resonating with me. Um, sometimes it takes me a while. It took me two years to write about 9-11. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it does take a while. As, as, since I'm an artist itself, I know how that works. So how, what is your feelings about what he's about? I think on day 13 now in office. So what is your feelings about just some of the things that he's done so far? I mean, he's real out of pocket. <laughs> <laughs> you said he out of pocket. He's out of line. You know, I, I think, I'm not sure how, I mean, he, was a, he is a great businessman. I'm not sure he understands how our, uh, how our checks and balances work. Yes. Because he feels like, you know, I don't, I'm not sure that he realizes he has to check in with the Senate and the legislator. I'm not sure that he realizes this. I'm not sure that he realizes that they can overthrow anything that he puts out. Yes, the president does have the power to veto some bills that come through, but uh, I think he thinks that he can just do whatever he wants, write whatever he wants, and it's just going to go through. And as the judge out of New York showed him, like, look, we're going to put a stay on this ridiculousness that you have. You see what happened with her, though. What? Yes, of course. <laughs> it's like, I hope she doesn't come up missing, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, like like the show Scandal, like yeah, other people come on me. No. <laughs> well, how important is it to you as a poet to also have roots in activism? Because, you know, if you look back in history, poets have always had roots in activism. And I know one of the first uh, poetry performances that you performed and memorized was Langston Hughes. So how important is it to, for you as a poet to make sure you keep your roots in activism? I, I think we are the voice of the people. And I feel like... Um, that's part of our job if we want it to be or not. I mean, even if you're a new poet and you're just sitting in the audience and all of a sudden you get inspired, you're inspired because you have something to say that's right. not being said. So right. if it's from your, your house, specifically your house, or your neighborhood, or your block, or your school, or your community, um, I mean, that's the thing that the, that the audience feedback is about. It's like, oh, you've said what I've been trying to say, or you're saying what I'm trying to feel, or you've prevented me from committing suicide, or kicking drugs, or bad eating habits, or whatever. So as long as we're vulnerable and tell our stories the way we know it, or the stories that are around us, I think that uh, we get defaulted into activism, but I also think that it's our job to pick up that hammer and be the cannon, to be the voice of the people in, in our in, in, in everything that we know, everything that we travel and see, and because we're we're like live documentation, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. so, uh, if we're not being the voice of the people or not helping to improve our community, then what is our job? Just to be spewing off random words. Right. Words that yeah. I mean, we got hip hop for that. <laughs> you went there. <laughs> So, um, I know you also are an avid runner, so what's the next marathon that you're going to do? So, I just did uh, the half marathon in Miami four days ago. Oh, okay. Thursday? Yeah, it was yeah. Monday. And it was, That's what's up. Yeah, it was, it was great. It was great. It was my first one of the, of the year. Um, it just showed me where I was at fitness-wise. I did the Chicago marathon um, this past October, so about four or five months ago. Um, that went well, but I was injured during the race. I was injured before the race, and I thought I could will it away. Mm -hmm. but, uh, that didn't go so right. <laughs> right. Chicago and, Mar and Miami are beautiful marathons. You should definitely run them. I'm not a marathoner. I want to repeat that. Say I'm not a veteran marathoner, but anything from the half marathon on down, I'm an expert at. 
and I have a book out called Run Ugly that you can get on Amazon. It's a motivational okay. book for runners, people who want to be runners, not sure if you want to be runners. Um, it also tells a story in the back of the book about how I endured some racism, speaking of activism. So even in... Wow, okay. I, I still felt the need as a poet, as a writer, to talk about um, being a black runner. Are there any poems in or just straight, straight prose? There is a poem. There's one long poem in the end. Um, it's actually not even prose. It's just little short... Uh, it's just little short quotes to say I'm a runner because and they're all like little silly funny things but oh, okay. fact, I do have one poem and a story that you know talks about that's what's that that's the, the glory of being a poet you can yeah. you can flip flop in yeah, between you can flip it in right there and be like what I'm not right, reading right, right 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 now I'm gonna right. write you an essay like right, you can right. you can you can flip flop it up okay so tell people if people are in Atlanta and they want to look you up or they want to go to your spot where you're hosting regularly tell people how they can do that um, so I hope at Apache Cafe every fourth Sunday and this July 2017 will be my 10 year anniversary so if you're in Atlanta around Atlanta can come to Atlanta fourth Sunday in July please come for my 10 year anniversary celebration um, there every fourth Sunday with DJ Noda we travel all over the country to get all over the world together actually um, performing we have a show called Poetry vs. Hip-Hop that we'll be bringing to Kansas City I guess okay, that's what's up. help us out on the promo so <laughs> um, and we're gonna be partnering with you lit and Bonafide G to, to bring that here but but every fourth Sunday at Apache Cafe and all of my social media is the Queen Sheba spelled correctly because I'm black. All right, I follow her, so make sure you do as well. I'm Serenity reminding you to spit your peace. I'm IFBB Bikini Pro Cat Williams, and when I'm not working out in the gym, I'm searching the web on Cascade Media and What's Up Kansas City. So make sure you check them out.